Matt Christine here from Sight of Sound Magazine, backstage at the Sands Event Center Bethlehem with one of the members of Pinder. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, I'm Cody. Cool. Well, welcome back. As I said, when we were walking in here, we were at the uh, acoustic show um, back in November. How was the rest of that run for you guys? That was a blast, man. You know, that was something that we'd always wanted to do and, had, you know, up to that point, never had a chance to do. And uh, I don't know. I mean, the rest of the shows on that tour were a little different than they were here because mm -hmm. they were really, like, really small and, and intimate, you know, almost like you just like reach out and touch people pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it was a pretty nice setup over there with all the chairs. And yeah, that's a nice venue. Yeah, that's that was my first time there actually for that. But um, since then, you guys released the album Welcome to the Freak Show. Uh, you toured a little bit in support of that in December, also with Nine Point for a few of the dates. Uh, yeah. Um, how has the crowd reception for the new material been so far? It's been great. You know, it's probably been one of our most well received albums, um, you know, since the first one. So. Um, you know, so far so good. Yeah. More fan interaction now that the material is actually out. I know you guys are playing five to six new songs on the acoustic tour. Are you still playing that many now? Yeah, I think we're still doing, I think we're doing, I think it is six actually. Yeah. Okay. A couple of different ones. We kind of switched yeah, switch it down. But yeah, I mean, the, you know, the interaction's been great. Fans are, you know, singing all the words. And stuff yeah, that's kind of so nice. That's, that's always good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I, I caught up with Austin at the uh, acoustic show, he said you guys write all of the tracks actually with just an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. Does that influence the tracks in any way? Do you find that like they all kind of follow a certain path because they're written that way, or do they evolve once the basis is there? No, I think the reason we do it that way is because we have a you know pretty much a theory that you know if if a song is a hit song. You know, with just an acoustic guitar, then mm -hmm. once you you know add the uh, production elements and all the rest of the layers, that you know it'll make it just that much better. Yeah, it'll just be a complete song then. Yeah. Let's actually talk a few of the tracks. Uh, talk about a few of the tracks off of Freak Show. Uh, tell me a little bit about "See You in Hell." That was a that was a fun song to write, man. You know, it's like I don't know. It's one of those deals. You always you know make the joke. You know, well, you know. I'll probably be in hell, but all yeah. my friends will be there with me, kind of thing. And you know, we got to talking about it. Well, hell, maybe it's maybe it's not that bad. Maybe yeah. it'll just be a good time. You know, we'll get to party with all these, you know, cool famous musicians. And so, I don't know. It, it, it was just uh, part of the idea was a lot of fun. I thought. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun song. It's going to be fun. You guys play it live? Yeah. Oh, see it tonight. What about uh, "Talk to Me"? That's more of the more intimate song on the album, I would say. What was the basis for that song? Well, I think I think everybody's uh, had that discussion with their uh, their wife or girlfriend or whatever. Yeah, maybe. whatever it's like, yeah. Yeah. You always hear, or at least I've heard that a million times, you know, why don't you just talk to me and, you know, whatever. So I figured that'd be a, a good song to write. The album is, uh, compared to your other ones at least, very diverse, like track to track. All the tracks seem like they could be a standalone single as opposed to like a complete album and I mean that in a good way like I feel like every single one of the tracks could be it's its own lead single from another album did, was that like a premeditated thing or did it just kind of happen because I know you guys didn't really go in with a, a concept per se for this one yeah I mean you know we knew you know like for example all of our all American Nightmare we knew we wanted to go a little heavier a little darker yeah um, you know for this one you know we uh, we just wanted to do what was best for each individual song, you know, so we didn't really have like a, a whole concept or theme like you said, so, um, you know, and this time uh, myself and Marshall Dutton got to co-produce the, the album together, so, um, you know, it was just the two of us kind of really hammering out a lot of the production ideas, so it gave us a chance to kind of really take our time and experiment, which yeah. um, played a big role in that, and I thought that was pretty cool. Did you guys write as much as you did for All American Nightmare? Because I know you wrote close to seventy for that. So. Yeah, we we didn't write quite as much, uh, quite as many. We did uh, we probably did twenty songs. Okay. Um, but you know we still had a ton left over. Left over, over and you know. one of those made it through to this one. I yeah, guess. yeah, I, and you know to be honest, there are still several, you know, out of that that bunch that you know I'd like to resurrect. I guess. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good word for it. Maybe we'll see you <laughs> in the future. I saw a few articles about how Austin was going through a difficult period as this album was uh, kind of coming together. 
did that affect the rest of you guys in any way as you were coming together, or did you all just keep kind of going about your own business like it was? No, I mean, you know, it's kind of kind of different how we how we do things. Um, you know, us and I got would get together for all the writing yeah. portions and stuff, um, and then you know he was kind of dealing with his own you know thing back at home while you know we were putting together you mm -hmm. know all the production elements for the record and uh you know and then he came in and you know we did all of his parts and stuff and then you know that freed him up whenever he was done to yeah. take care of whatever he had to take care of so, yeah. yeah that's good it's good that you guys got through that as a band because i know for some bands that's a struggle sometimes but uh yeah we're pretty lucky man we got a you know a great relationship among you know our band. We've had the the same members for forever since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we. Two thousand five. Two thousand. Well, we started the band then? in two thousand one. Yeah. So uh, me and Austin and Blower have been together for a long. That's a long time. time. <laughs> You're making me feel old now. So, how do you guys feel about the uh, reviews for Freak Show? Do you think they were fair? Um. Well, I've seen a lot of great reviews, and I've seen a lot of, you know, awful reviews, and to be really, really honest... Awful. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't really give a shit no. anyway. To be no. I mean, you can't please everybody, and we've learned, no, that you can't. Long, we've learned that a long time ago, so, I mean, as long as the majority of our fans are, are happy with it, then, you know, that's yeah, all you got to be doing something, right? You're selling out bigger and bigger <laughs> venues, so that's right. you're moving your way up the that's food right. chain. So, uh, Let's talk about set lists. Like, like I said earlier, with four albums out now, you have a lot of tracks to choose from of your own recording, not to mention uh, half a dozen covers, I would say, at least. Obviously, you want to play a lot of the new stuff because that's what everybody's listening to. But how do you balance that between the old songs and that occasional cover and a slow song? Like, Well, we, you know, we try to uh, keep our set length down a little bit. We, you know, we don't want to make it too long. Um, we try yeah, to keep it... High exact. energy. And yeah. Then... So, I mean... Now, on this tour, you know, we're playing the majority of, like, the singles from okay. you know, the previous albums. And then what we feel, you know, are the strongest tracks from the new album. That's cool. Yeah. So take me through a day in Hinder. What goes on before you guys take the stage? Do you guys have any rituals, any everyday yeah. practices? Yeah, we do. We all don't have any practices. We're all yeah. too lazy for that. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it just, you know, it just kind of depends. Like, today, you know, we... Uh, you know, get up and, and go to a radio station and do like an acoustic performance and, you know, meet and greet and that sort of thing. And, That's cool. You know, then we'll come back and, you know, get to show hang out with people like that. Yeah, and do interviews. And do interviews. And yeah. Stuff. Um, you know, and then right before the show, um, you know, we usually kind of clear the bus and, you know, crank music and, and you know, start start drinking, start doing shots yeah. and, you know, do our thing. Kind of get into party mode, you know, because we kind of like to think of our shows as, as big parties. So we kind of get into it's that. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Do you guys listen to anything specific before the show, or just whatever's? Yeah, just kind of whatever, and it, it, and it kind of depends. It depends on if it's like football season or basketball uh -huh. season now, because we have our Oklahoma City Thunder that we're yeah. pretty pretty into. So if there's basketball on, there's no music happening. All right. Well, cool. I will. I look forward to uh, seeing the show tonight. I will be up front for the first three, photographing it. So uh -huh. you'll see me. Um, thanks for sitting down for for uh, Sight of Sound magazine and. That's about it. Right on, cool. Thanks, brother. Thank you.